everybody. We are going to uh, be reading a new chapter of our uh, 13 Colonies Reader today. Uh, we have talked quite a bit about the first colony, Virginia, and we're going to move on from that to a new colony, Maryland. Can you all see on your map where Maryland is, what type of colony it is, and just where on the map it's located? Which type of colony is it? You see? Yeah, it's the um, top southern colony. So like the most northern one you would get to. I'll present over to that map that's in the book and that's very similar to what you should have in your notes. Right here, just barely north of Virginia. So Maryland and Virginia right there. Okay, let's move on to chapter six. So Virginia succeeds. Just reviewing that one. Okay, so story of Maryland. Now a friend of the king. In the early 1600s, George Calvert worked for the King of England as a government official. The job was very important. Calvert worked hard and did his job well. As a result, the king promised him a reward. Now the king told Calvert he would give him a lot of land in America. But there was one big problem. George Calvert was a Roman Catholic. That made a lot of Protestant people very unhappy. Now, they did not want a Catholic to be a government official. Calvert was forced to give up his job. So, both types of Christians, but there was a lot of conflict between these two groups at the time. Almost everybody in England was a Christian, but English Christians were divided into two different groups that disliked each other. One group was the Catholics. Um, if we have time, we might do a little bit more story of the world another time to talk more about this conflict. Now, Catholics believed that the Pope in Rome was the head of the whole church. Another group was the Protestants. Most English Protestants believed that the king was the head of the church in England. So there's a lot going on between these groups at the time, but right, some people believe that the Pope, who's the head of the Roman Catholic Church, going back to um, our study of the Roman Empire, um, so it's head of that Roman Catholic Church, and then English Protestants believe that their king was really the head of their church, Church of England. Now, although George Calvert had changed his religion from Protestant to Roman Catholic, the king liked him. He gave Calvert the title of Lord Baltimore, the first baron of Baltimore. He was named Lord Baltimore after a small place in um, Ireland. Most people who lived there, meaning that place in Ireland, were Catholics. Because most of the people in England were Protestants, the laws of England were sometimes unfair to Catholics. But in countries where most of the people were Catholics, such as France, Spain, and Portugal, the laws were sometimes unfair to Protestants. So George Calvert wanted to start a colony where English Catholics and Protestants would all be treated fairly. This colony would be a refuge or a place where English Catholics would be protected. The king thought this was a fine idea. So he gave Calvert permission to build a colony just north of Virginia. The new colony was named Maryland for Queen Henrietta Maria, the king's wife. George Calvert died shortly after the king gave him Maryland or Maria land, maybe they should call it. His oldest son, Cecilius, became the second Lord Baltimore and the new owner of Maryland. So, Maryland's second owner. Unlike Virginia, which was owned by a company, Maryland was owned by just one man. Although he lives in England, Cecilius Calvert owned all the land and made all the rules, but back in England. The new Lord Baltimore asked his younger brother, Leonard, to go to Maryland with the first group of colonists. Leonard would be the governor of this new colony in Maryland. 
The Calvaire started Maryland as a colony for Catholics, but they also wanted Protestants to settle there to increase the colony's population. So even though it started to be a refuge for these Catholics so that they wouldn't be treated unfairly, they also wanted it to be a, just a growing place and so Catholics and Protestants living together. Now in early spring 1634, two small ships sailed into the Chesapeake Bay. Governor Leonard Calvert and nearly 200 colonists were on board. The ships had no extra space. The passengers had brought with them most of what they would need to survive their first year in the new colony. Governor Calvert told a group of Native Americans that he wanted to buy one of their villages. The Native Americans were not using the village. So they agreed to let the newcomers live there while the colonists built their own houses and planted crops. The governor knew how badly the people in Virginia had suffered. He made sure that the people of his colony had enough food and supply to avoid a starving time, which we know they really learned their lesson there. There, were, there was that starving time and you can't really focus on growing your wealth and having this thriving life if you're not even able to eat. So they fixed that mistake. Now, Governor Calvert named the colonists' new home St. Mary's City. This became the first settlement in the Maryland colony. Now, two years later, in 1636, the settlement still looked like a Native American village, as you can see there with the wigwams. The colonists lived in wigwams that the Native Americans had built. Some of the Maryland colony, colonists were wealthy Catholics, but more Protestants than Catholics actually are the ones who came to, to Maryland. Many of the Protestants worked for the Catholic gentlemen as servants. Now everyone in St. Mary's City worked hard to get the colony started. Catholic gentlemen and Protestant servants worked side by side. Governor Calvert had the colonists build a chapel or small church for St. Mary's City. Both Catholics and Protestants shared the chapel so that each group could worship in its own way. In 1649, the Toleration Act was created in Maryland. The act gave religious freedom to all Christians in the colony. So we've heard that religious freedom was one of the reasons that people wanted to come here. Um, this is the strongest representation of that so far. Not people who wanted to get wealthy, they just wanted to have freedom to have church the way they um, chose to celebrate or chose to worship. So in both Maryland and Virginia, things did not work out as the colonists had hoped. The Virginia company lost so much money that the King of England took direct control of Virginia. So the Calvert family still owned Maryland, but not too many Catholics actually settled there. In the early days in Virginia and Maryland, many colonists became sick and died. Children often saw one or both of their parents die. Many children died too. At first, Virginia and Maryland planters thought that raising tobacco was almost as good as finding gold, but soon they were shipping so much to England, they couldn't even sell it all. There was too much tobacco and not enough customers. This caused the price of tobacco to drop. After the first few years, anyone who raised tobacco had a really hard time making money. That sounds really tough. They've got people dying because they're in this new place and they're not used to the diseases and they can't even make the money just to make a living like they thought they would. The only way planters could make money from raising tobacco was to own lots of land, have lots of workers, and ship lots of tobacco to many places. So they could get a much better profit if they had a lot of land, not just a little farm. Now getting enough land was not that hard to do. Finding workers, however, was much more difficult as we saw in Story of the World yesterday. Fewer English people were willing to move to Virginia and Maryland to be indentured servants. Remember that indentured servants were people who chose to go over. They would have maybe free housing and a free trip to America and they would work for a time and then they would be able to change jobs if they wanted to. Keeping indentured servants was also very expensive. Planters needed another way to find large numbers of workers and they found these workers in Africa. 
Sadly, we saw this yesterday as well. Now, the very first Africans were brought to Virginia in the year 1619. Some historians think that these African workers were indentured servants. So some of them might have enjoyed this opportunity to come. Others believe that even those very first ones were enslaved, which means they had no way of saying whether they wanted to work there or not, and a lot of them were very mistreated. They worked for a period of time on a plantation, and then they were free to leave. Some became free landowners, just as English and, um, indentured servants did. So there's a big variety. Some of them were able to work for a time, and then they became free, and they could own land, but not all of them. In the mid-1600s, however, Virginia and Maryland planters changed the rules. Africans brought to the colonies were forced to become enslaved workers. As we saw with Story of the World, some of that was that they were prisoners of war and they were captured and then forced to come over. They were considered the property of an owner. They were not paid and most would never be freed. It also means that they wouldn't be able to choose to stay behind with their families. A lot of them were forced to separate. Their children would become enslaved workers too. And relying on enslaved workers meant that plantation owners could make more money. By the late 1600s, large numbers of enslaved Africans were brought to work on plantations near the Chesapeake Bay. They were treated harshly. That's an understatement. A lot of them were treated terribly where they had living conditions that were worse than animal. Um, the type of living conditions for just an animal would be. In one southern colony, so many enslaved Africans were brought in that more than half of the people living there were originally from Africa. And that colony was called Carolina. So we're going to get to Carolina next week, um, specifically hearing about the plantations, which is the large, large land used for cash crops that we heard about, um, which is when Farmers weren't just farming for themselves. They were farming so many acres to send off to other places um, because that's when they were more profitable. But obviously they were being very selfish and greedy um, to want to have all of these things for themselves when people were being hurt because of that and um, taken advantage of and just considered property. So it's complicated. There are definitely some people who were just indentured servants at the time and some who were not. Um, a little comparison, or not comparison, but just um, overview of the difference between these indentured servants and uh, enslaved. Um, so indentured servants could have land. Um, so they could own property. They had choice. They Basically, they chose to sign up for it at the beginning. Um, so maybe they were separated from their family, but they were deciding to do that for a season of time. Um, and most were just poor people who wanted an opportunity to make some money. Um, and they worked for just that period of time and then they became freed. And these enslaved workers who were brought over were not paid and oftentimes they never were freed. And sometimes even their kids became um, enslaved as well, obviously not having any say in it. And they were considered property just as if it was land, but it's a person who should be able to make choices for themselves and have just as much freedom no matter where they're from. Um, and many of them were captured um, and some of them prisoners of war and others just captured in general. So. Uh, that is all for today's reading. You will have some notes to take on this as well, and I'll include a map so that you can um, have a map of Maryland specifically in your notes. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. I will talk to you later. Bye.